All right, we got one last topic to get to. Todd Gurley. Yeah. People well, are all up in arms. We, People we, are freaking out, man. We touched on Todd Gurley a while ago on Patreon and, and going to echo the same things. But it was, and we talked about it a little bit on a show with Matt Foreman, who's a uh, He's Rams fan. He's a St. Louis Rams fan, now turned Los Angeles. Right. And he was saying, you know, it's a buy opportunity. Yeah. Um, obviously, now they drafted Henderson. So wanted to just, and we've talked a little bit about Henderson on the mock it up, but wanted to kind of tie it all together here and see how everyone felt about Gurley and get your sentiments out there. So anybody want to uh, want to go first here? Well, I'll go first because I got a, a good idea about what you're going to say. Um, <laughs> just because we've, we've yelled about it on the phone back and forth about things we've seen on Twitter. Um, I'm I think, thinking about starting a show that just says stupid shit I've seen on Twitter. We could definitely do a segment. That's we got start legs. a segment. <laughs> That's got legs. That could run. I, I'm down with a segment. That could run. Um, I think if uh, not not knowing exactly what you're going to say, but knowing pretty much the direction y'all guys are about to take this, I think if you don't think that Henderson in the third round as a trade up is a yellow flag, I'm not saying it's a red flag, but it's at least a cautionary tale. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's just great insurance for the team. And probably more likely that than Todd Gurley's never going to play football again, obviously. Right. That's not the case. I think them taking the third-round pick on Henderson in a team that, you know, well, they're fairly balanced, but they could have used some more offensive line help, and they got some different holes across the defense. They, you know, they, they shored up a key cog in their system because the right. running back means a lot to what McVay's trying to do. Mm-hmm. And Gurley with the volume that he's been crushing the NFL with the last two years has been amazing. And I think that it's, I think you are, if you don't, if you don't at least acknowledge that that is substantial, then I don't think you're looking at it right way. But I think if you put, take that and run with it and make it the most important thing, this one, what's going on. I think that is your prop up to not really, I think you're really looking at it the wrong way if you do that. I don't right. think you can say, oh, well, Daryl Henderson's really good running back, and the Rams took him in the third round, so that means Gurley's dead. Right. If you put those two things together, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. That's that's kind. Of, I I think it matters, and I think the Rams are saying, hey, we want to be able to have an explosive player at running back, and look, we can get one in the third round to put behind our stud. Right. Our stud has a squeaky wheel right now. And and it's more to be talked about about his limp in April, which is hilarious that people are up in arms about that, right. like Jay Wayne said. But I think if you don't look at those things like that, you're missing it. But I think if you take those things and put it to where a lot of people are putting it, I think there's I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, just to start off, like I I, I don't think that you can sell right now unless somebody's like still pretty interested in in Todd Gurley and wants to pay reasonable market price like there's no reason you should be like oh well i've seen people be like oh well you know i'll i'll i would sell them for sony michelle and 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 a draft pick and you know because i know i can start sony michelle or or i'm trading them for nick chubb because like bo you know nick chubb's leg almost fell off like you know he has he has arthritis in his knee too you know sony michelle had a procedure right before the season and missed some weeks to have his knee cleaned up like These guys all bone on bone. These guys all have issues. Yeah. Like every player in the NFL has some sort of issue. Yeah. Like couldn't couldn't agree more about being a terrible time to sell. Right. You so I don't I don't think you could sell. sell. You can't be like, well, you gotta you gotta get out if, right now. If you have a Jay Wayne in your league when it comes to Clemson players, if you got a guy who's got Todd Gurley's Cl- uh, college jersey, maybe you can get ninety five percent of what he was worth four months ago. Right. And this is not a problem. You know. But you know, if you got Jay Wayne, if it's Jay Wayne and a Clemson guy. On his Jay Wayne and Deshaun Watson, like kryptonite, he'll, whatever right. it takes. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like that's his boy. That's, it's not so, true. I don't oh, really. Come on. I only have him in one league. But you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you. Oh, I I got Jay. I got I got a Clemson guy that I might want to sell. You're calling Jay Wayne first, right? Right. Yeah. So like, if you got that guy in your league, you just happen to have that monster Georgia dog or that monster Rams fan. He's got girly jerseys and he lives and dies. Georgia dog football on Saturday. You might be able to get 95 percent of Todd Gurley, and you might be able to pivot to that. Ezekiel Elliott, Saquon, uh, Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, similar type val- volume kind of guy. Mm-hmm. You might be able to pivot to that, and it maybe it takes. Hey, I'll give you, the, I'll give you Gurley in a second rounder, and just get out from under some of this, uh, you know, gamble. I could see that, 
But if you, it, I, I don't, I think it would take somebody that's just that diehard Rams or Georgia fan to even give you that type of value. So I think you're right. And that's, I like that you started there before, just in case anybody turns us off or your phone battery dies while you're listening to this podcast. Like, don't be selling for low, low yeah, retail just, value just to right be now. Like, you're, oh, well, he's dead and he's never, like, I, I don't, I don't believe that. No. I, and I, and you know, you, you touched on it of like, well, they drafted Henderson. The, the tea leaves is spoken like they, they think Todd Gurley's dead and, and he he's out of here and they brought Malcolm Brown back and blah, 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 blah. Like, okay. Like I, I, they're like, they're the usage for Todd Gurley has been insane. Like, yeah. so dialing him back is absolutely what they're going to do. Like yeah. they drafted Henderson so they can put a player out there who is really good in space and they feel like, all right, well, this guy can is a pretty good fit for our system, and we can give him a certain amount of plays a game, and we can take Todd Gurley off the field and get him rested. But if you don't think Todd Gurley can have a hell of a game with 15 carries and, and, a, and a catcher three, like Todd Gurley doesn't need to practice. Todd Gurley doesn't need to be there in OTAs. Right. Todd Gurley doesn't right. need to be out there in preseason. Right. Todd Gurley knows how to do everything the Rams are doing. Right. He knows how to do it extremely well. He knows how to get in the end zone. Like, the guy Catch. had an injury. He had an injury. There Something happened. I don't know if it was a meniscus. Some people are saying it was a bone bruise. And if it was a bone bruise, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, it's just, it has to heal on its own. I've listened to Reggie Bush talk about Todd Gurley, and he was saying he had a bone bruise. And it's one of the worst things you can do because there isn't a remedy in the world that you can't stem it. It's not no ice, no heat. Nothing fixes it. It just has to stop. And he might have been thinking he was okay, came back to cut up the Cowboys, and then... Something flared up on him again, and he it wasn't right. Um, in my opinion, maybe it was kind of a meniscus deal. Is he limping in April? He was seen limping in April, but you're a moron because if you're like, oh, that's it. See, I told you he's dead. Like, he probably had a procedure to get things cleaned up and probably had a little bit of a stem cell or some, something along those lines. And before all the people are like, well, stem cells, they may or may not work. Like, I, I get it. I get it. They may or may not work. They're probably going to help him out in the in the short term here. And he's probably going to see a reduced. He's absolutely going to see a reduced role. But is Daryl Henderson about to come in and be the the Todd Gurley f this year for the Rams? Absolutely not. Like I'm down with taking Daryl Henderson. You can get some standalone value starting Daryl Henderson. But if if Todd Gurley is really hurt and doesn't play, and Todd Gurley gets hurt in the season, like Malcolm Brown's going to be in there, or uh, John Kelly's going to be in there. Like, it's not just going to be like, oh, well, Daryl Henderson's now getting the, sh like, the sh like, they brought in Henderson to take a take off some load. I think we talked about this multiple times. I think Malcolm Brown is more of a direct backup running back for Todd Gurley. And don't take John Kelly out of the equation because this is a pretty talented guy. They saw an opportunity to get a guy who they thought was a really good fit. And I think Henderson's a great fit for this offense. I don't think Henderson's a workhorse back. Like you don't need to give Henderson. Henderson's not a guy you need to get. You want to give 20 carries a game in the NFL. Like, I don't think that's their vision for Henderson here. No, but I can't be mad at the Rams for, for taking this guy. I mean, when you see a, a player no, like him. Who's mad at him? I'm not mad at him. I think well, it's a great move. Everyone's mad at Todd early because they took Henderson like they're mad at they're mad at the situation they're just ready to to sell 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 talk early right which we're telling you not to do but with Daryl Henderson I mean when you're a team who plays in space the way they do and there's a player like that who's electric in space I mean the Saints moved up to grab Alvin Kamara when they had AP and Ingram on the squad right now Curly Gurley's way better than those guys maybe not AP in his prime but I mean he's better than Mark Ingram was for the Saints and thirty something, maybe. and I don't think Henderson is as good as Kamara is, but I see the similar like attempt to get a guy that's electric in space to like help your squad out, and I'm with you. I don't think he's going to be the bulk carry carrying the load if Todd Gurley were to get hurt. Uh, if you want to take Henderson in a startup because you have Todd Gurley and Henderson's going like I've, he eight ninth tenth round somewhere in there, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower. I'm I'm down with that, but I'm also taking Malcolm Brown in the 18th, 19th, 20th round. Yeah, to back up my Todd Gurley stock, and the the discount's already getting built in with Gurley in startups already. It's already back to the 10th, the 12th, Pick top of the raw. second. Like right. it's the the discount's built in. If 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 he was 100 percent healthy and everybody was confident, he'd still be the first or second player drafted off the board. Right, like you're still getting one of the most talented players in the league. Now, sh sure, like what we say a lot, like what you want to do with your first pick or two is just not fuck it up and. There's definitely, a, like you said in the beginning of this thing, there's definitely a little bit of a yellow flag now of being like, well, there's some, is Todd Gurley going to be good? Is to, like, I don't know. Is Joe Mixon going to do something stupid? Is 
Nick Chubb's leg going to fall off? Is Sony Michelle going to be healthy? Is Darius Geis going to be right? Is Leonard Fournette's ankle going to hold up? Like all of these guys at this top, like Christian McCaffrey and Ezekiel Elliott, if they're going to stay on their work pace, like is something like this going to happen to them? Is something like, uh, is it going to happen to Saquon? Is something going to happen to Saquon? Like all these high, Devontae Freeman missed a bunch of games. Like, all these high-end running backs, there's something wrong with them. And Reggie Bush was like, well, i tell you what, every player in the NFL that's ever played and is in the NFL currently has arthritis. So don't be scared by the arthritis thing. Right, like, it's a pain management thing right. for the most part. And it's like, how much can Todd Gurley withstand and, and get through? And he's a tough guy, and he's super efficient. Like, maybe you don't see these 50-point games, but you're going to get to see him for a longer period of time by them taking some pressure off of him. Right, I, I, I agree 100%. They're going to... They, they're not going to use the usage that use him at the rate that they were using him clearly. Um, but I still think Todd Gurley can produce at a at a high octane level. And then some people listen to this will be like, we'll see. That's why I, I build my dynasty teams around receivers because of the longevity. Well, you can keep building around your longevity. I'm going to build around the guys who score 100 more points than those and try to win championships. Right. Like I'm I, I like you could just be like, well, that's why I take a receiver in the first or second round. Like. Hey, that's fine. Like pretty much every league that I've uh, been in over the last couple of years in 2016, Todd Gurley won you the league in 2017. He got you there. Like it's always a run, like it's always a running back. And then probably somebody who has another good running back on their team who was in the championship game. Christian McCaffrey's team was in the championship. Ezekiel Elliott's team, usually around the championship. Le'Veon Bell's team when Le'Veon Bell's cooking. David Johnson's team when David Johnson's cooking. All playoff teams, no doubt. Like absolutely, keep having Odell. What Odell doesn't get hurt, right? Like Odell got hurt, right? It happens. Um, I, I feel like uh, you mentioned it about this start. Like in a startup, you know, you're looking at you know Gurley sliding back to pick one eight, one ten, one twelve, two one, two two. Like I, I can, if you want to take some gamble out of it in a startup, and and just say, hey, I'm not going to worry about that, and 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 just pass on Gurley in that at that range in a startup because of the similar type value. Play. Like you said, if Gurley's right, he's one 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 two. So you're not you're not similar anymore if he's right. But with there with the question marks being there, if you want to pass on him in a startup, I get that, and I'm yeah. not going to twist your arm. I, I, but I'm if not you, either. You can buy him right now for a sum of parts that doesn't equal taking him in a 112 startup scenario you know like right. just say you're at the 112 and you just say, hey, you know I'm, I'm gonna take this guy or that guy at 112 and I like this player and I'm gonna pass on Todd Gurley but right now if, if you got the right mixture of of somebody in your league who's absolutely going crazy about this Todd Gurley news what I'm trying to say is you can probably buy Todd Gurley with somebody that you would might you might give him somebody you took in the third round or, uh, you know, existing leagues, mm -hmm. a third round type player, a third and a fifth round type player package together might get you girly. Like, you know, a right. Chris Godwin might get you, Chris Godwin plus something might get you a girly that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like that. Somebody might be freaking out. And that's the type, you know, you, you just you might put in somebody safer in your startup. But in an existing league, you could go purchase the girly with players that you wouldn't even be thinking about selecting in right. that early second round of a startup area. Agreed. Definitely be trying to buy him if someone's freaking. But out if you're about getting girly, I'm I'd, I'd buy in on Henderson. Maybe get some standalone value with him on another play. And if something happened to him, his role would increase a little bit. But I think you also need to have Malcolm Brown on your team. And if you do that, you saw what C.J. Anderson did when he came in there. Like you just the the Rams obviously think highly of Malcolm Brown. They brought him back. They the sure. Lions tried to grab him and brought him back. So like they're it, you plug him obviously people's running backs are replaceable quote unquote or whatever but it's a good system you get malcolm brown in there getting 15 carries a game he'll probably be he's not gonna be girly productive but he'll probably be pretty good and and henderson standalone value and we'll probably have some pretty good games this year sure i mean if girly like went down went down and they shut him down for the year like it wouldn't surprise me at all with the spacing that off that offense creates that that, that henderson i mean could crush it it wouldn't surprise me at all, even if he wasn't in that lead back role. Like there was, you know, there was a time when Alvin Kamara was coming into his own and he was crushing fantasy through the air before he really, yeah. like, like the, his rookie year, it still really, um, uh, the, what's the, the big dude, um, 
the running back for the Saints at the Ingram. time. Ingram was doing a lot more of the between the tackles grinding, and Kamara was doing a lot more of the space work, and he was still – they were both RB1s. Yeah. You know, so it wouldn't surprise me at all if Henderson came in there and started crushing if, if Gurley was shut down. So I agree – yeah, with or without Gurley on your team, I think Henderson's a good purchase. Yeah. Because um, even if Gurley's out there kicking butt to start the year, like you got your Henderson believers before he even went to the draft. Yeah. You know, and then at first when he got picked by the Rams, everybody's like, oh, well – Henderson's out because he's behind Gurley. And then it's taken some time, a couple of news cycles, and Jake Glazer's report comes back around. And they're like, oh, well, Gurley's dead. Maybe yeah. Henderson's awesome again. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Isn't it annoying how Jake Glazer just brought this all back around for like no reason? Like, it's been, we already went was, through this whole conversation. Re- it was a report that was like months, months ago. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Glazer brings it up, and now it's like, fresh. Oh, news. no, he had a new injury. Fresh news. Like, nope. come on. Oh, he was he was limping and using a friend as a crutch in April. Like, Bo, he that's because he had a knee procedure. <laughs> like, they didn't cut it off. He's on an amputee. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think that'll wrap up today's free show. Be sure to check out the website, the FFDynasty.com. I got you- I got something to add real quick because we brought up Patreon a couple times, and as we should, I don't, I've taken a lot of my all my personal trades to the Patreon side of things. But I'm sitting here fuming. I just got an email, and I think this would be good for the people that just as a we're just Casey and I are in a startup in the 20th round of a startup. I offered a guy to trade back. I wanted to, we wanted to trade up three spots and the dude took a player that was way down the list and he could have got, he could have traded back three in the 20th round. I'm just fuming. Like I offered him a ton in the 20th round to move back three spots. And he p- took a player that is completely replaceable and more in that spot in the draft. Like, you're probably not looking at the same. I'm not. I didn't ask him to drop back 13 picks, three picks, and he and move up three picks here and move up three rounds over here. And it's just like would have been a ton for the three pick drop, and he didn't take it and he made his pick. It's just like if you just weigh your options when you're that late in a draft. If it's in the first round of a draft, three picks is a ton. Mm-hmm. In the twentieth round, three picks is p- peanuts. Right. And I offered him way more than peanuts. And just got the quick reject. I'm taking my player. Maybe he's putting his flag in the ground, but in the 20th round. Right. Come on now. Good story. I'm just saying, for those in the startup out there, just if when you get that late in the just draft. Just make trades with Big Co so he doesn't get upset. Is that right, the moral right. of the story? When you get that late in the draft and you're looking at a guy down the list, more than likely people are looking at their own players. It's, like, it's not yeah. like somebody's glowing and the Todd Gurley's sitting there at 2-4 in the startup. Everybody's trying to trade up for that spot maybe. Like you're yeah. not nobody's knocking on your door in the twentieth round for your guy. Yeah, they're you know like this. I'm not coming up to get your guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, three picks. This is a venting corner for three Big Co. Didn't get the trade. The guy wouldn't trade with him. Oh, Big Co's I'm, upset. I'm just I don't know what that has to do with much, but all right. Uh, back to the Become closing. a patron member. You can get more of Big Co. Being upset about <laughs> trades that he didn't well, get to I make. Well, I mean, just or, as we've grown up. I don't know if that's as, much of a selling point Well, it was, fun. it was fun the first time or two that somebody the figured out. The show. You know, it's the first time. Yeah, I waited to the very end. <laughs> it was fun the first time or two then in a high-dollar league where somebody sent me an email and said, hey, you know, I heard you on the show this week or something. And it's just like, well, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. I'm playing for a lot of money over here. So I'm not. I'm trying not to talk about our personal trades and high dollar leagues out here in, in the public for thousands of people listening to this. I will you say know? for the people who are considering Patreon, generally the trade talk that Big Co brings over there is much better than what was just Oh, a tw- <laughs> no doubt. Just I'm, discussed right there. We 20th and I, and still I'm trying it would have been a lot better if I would have thrown the real names of the real players in there. This guy didn't trade me in the 20th round. You selectively kept those names out, huh? <laughs> Randall Cobb. Okay? Randall Cobb in the 20th round on a run first team with Amari well, Cooper, well, Michael actually, Gallup. Actually, something I want to talk about on Patreon. <laughs> Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, Ezekiel Elliott, run first team, Zach, Deke, uh, Dak, we're on Zeke, Dak. The, the, remember when they had Dez? Oh, man, all those guys would kill you <laughs> on the Cowboys. Dak will run for his first downs. I don't get it. I don't get it. You could have waited three picks and got your Randall Cobb. Probably could have waited three rounds. Could have waited. Uh, you know, you could have waited. Randall Cobb, really? And it's a best ball league, so. Really? We're still talking about this trade, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, you wanted some more specifics. You said it was Pride too, it out of You him. said it was too bland. Pride it out I did put a little. Did. Put a little salt it in it. It was a little bland. I just said, you know. You threw a little salt in there. Maybe a little garlic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you're not totally out on Patreon Chop now. Chop up a couple onions. Head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. You can also get there from the website, the FF Dynasty.com. Check out the rookie pages. Tell me if you uh, if we're missing a guy, a guy you'd like to see, and maybe I can uh, help you out there. But 
check it out. It's running, running smooth. Got a lot going on. Had a new article posted today so uh, about an Empire League, uh, which is a cool aspect of, of, of what you can do with Dynasty. Let's see. What else? iTunes, definitely hit us up with that five stars. That'd be so nice of you. If you can't, if you can't go over and give us the five bucks a month on Patreon and get your extra show, the least you could do is go hit us with a review on iTunes. That'd be very nice. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty, at Dynasty Big Co, at IMC Myers, at Jay Wayne's World. Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasty Podcast. <laughs>